So I just did a video on Amazon Studios, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, and now there is a new report regarding Amazon Studios. Now, if you guys remember, when the Rings of Power came out, Amazon tried to change their entire review system because they tried to claim that it was unfair to the TV shows, the review system based on how it was, and they locked you out for 72 hours, even though everybody and their mother can prove to you that it was much longer than 72 hours. They locked out my review of Amazon's Rings of Power for, I believe, almost almost a week only for it to get completely denied and saying that it doesn't fit their structure for leaving reviews even though I left very detailed notes I was not uh, like evil with it at all I didn't say bad things I didn't curse none of that stuff I kept it very very strict and very straightforward and they still denied it because it was a bad review so Amazon's review system obviously can't be trusted let alone any of these companies really I mean all these companies are are bought and paid for but why are we talking about Amazon Studios so apparently there is a new report that Amazon Studios is now scrapping the ranking shows based on audience scores because it revealed audiences found queer stories off Pudding. Wow. Wow. Now we're using LGBTQ people as a shield for the fact that you don't want to have audience scores up there to showcase people hating your shows. And dude, this is why I cannot, I cannot take anything that these people do seriously. I really can't because ultimately this, this is embarrassing. You, you are trying to, you're trying to use LGBTQ people as a literal shield against any sort of of responsibility regarding your TV shows. But let's see what this report has to say. So it says a new report claims that Amazon Studios scrapped an audience ranking system after data revealed audiences were put off by queer stories and themes. This new report comes from the Hollywood reporter's Kim Masters, who details that Amazon's reliance on testing and data led to a clash late summer, specifically following a marketing meeting regarding the company's A League of Their Own series. Mass, which by the way, A League of Their Own is terrible. Terrible. The remake of A League of Their Own is a fucking terrible remake and it should not exist. But again, none of these things exist because we want them to. They exist because these companies are trying to make money off of established IPs. But guys, before we continue the article, please, if you can like this video, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps us fight the YouTube suppression that we fight every single day. So it says, Masters notes during this meeting, an Amazon executive pointed out that the data showed audiences found queer stories off-putting and suggested downplaying those themes in materials promoting the show. Again, if you think people hate queer stories, perhaps it's not the queer aspect of the story that people dislike. Even though I'll give it to you, there are some people out there that if there's some gay shit in a story, they're not going to be for it no matter what. But that is few and far between. The problem with queer stories is that they are so half-assed. They are lazily done that people can just see the identity politics from a mile away. Nobody wants to give these movies or TV shows a chance because of the way you market them, because of the way you talk about non-stop about the diversity, equity, and inclusion. You're using LGBTQ people as shields against your criticism for your TV shows. You don't want to admit that all of this stuff has to do with the fact that you can't put a good diverse show together you think that by putting a different skin color up on the screen or by putting up a super flamboyant character on the screen that that's going to somehow make the tv show good and it takes away all creativity that you have to create but that's not how it works you still have to make a good tv show you still have to make a good story but the fucked up thing is that you want to focus on diversity so much that that takes precedence over the story itself thus you end up creating a terrible tv show that you then have to use your diverse people quote-unquote diverse people as shields against that said criticism this is the playbook you've been doing for the past how many years now since uh 2016 i believe was the uh ghostbuster reboot that, that they've been using this same strategy and disney has invented this strategy and mastered it from star wars the latest trilogy then came out and they've been using it since then so again you guys been doing this non-stop and that's the exact reason why people don't like queer stories or whatever way you want to put it so it says on top of this masters also detailed Multiple, multiple sources say Amazon system often ranked broad series featuring straight white male leads above all others. According to the report, the show's co-creator, Will Graham, launched this into an interrogation of the system, which resulted in Amazon dropping the system of ranking shows based on audience scores. This new report appears to lend credence to a previous rumor from Hollywood insider WDW Pro at that park place that claimed multiple Hollywood focus groups chose a dummy police show versus a woke-style police show. WDW Pro detailed that the dummy police show was based on a hacked-together episode of Starsky and Hutch that featured two young detectives, two white guys, one Ivy 
League and the other, a good old boy, are partnered in Vegas where they cultivate informants, recurring girlfriends. Every episode includes a fist fight with chairs and bottles flying. Every second episode has a car chase, alleys with blowing newspapers, jumping from rooftop to rooftop, unnecessarily overpowered firearms, muscle cars on the strip, Vegas location used to the hilt from grungy and rundown to full on glam. In contrast, the woke style show was allegedly a legitimate show that was being pitched to a number of streaming services, including Netflix that followed a POC policewoman in the Southern where she is shocked by racism, sexism, and abuse of power of her new colleagues, as well as their poor relations with the communities they serve. Now, again, look at the stark contrast between those two particular TV shows. If you wanted to take these two explanations as like cliff notes for what the TV show is about, which one are you more likely to watch? Honestly, just Ask yourself that honestly. Which one are you most likely to watch? Are you most likely to watch the one that seems like it's a hell of a lot of fun, that it just doesn't take itself seriously, and it's just having a good time with it and trying to create some sort of a fun story for people to enjoy, even if it's not something super deep or super mind-fucking, that it's just literally a simple story and a simple fun one at that? Wouldn't you want to watch that over something like this? A PLC policewoman in the South, in the South where she is shocked by racism, sexism, and abuse of power from her new colleagues as well as their poor relations with the communities they serve. Which one sounds more fun? You know what I'm saying? Like, which one sounds more interesting to watch? So again, you got to look at this stuff and realize it's not about the queerness. It's not about the diversity. It's about the way you handle the diversity. That's your worst enemy. The way you handle it is not good. And you're never going to be good if your sole focus is the diversity. It says not only did the show feature themes about racism and sexism, but it muddied the moral waters as the policewoman doesn't know who are the good guys and who are the bad guys anymore and has to watch her back on and off duty while she tries to initiate change both in her department and in her community. This report also appears to have credence in national polling done by Ramusen reports. The organization found that only 28% of American adults believe the emphasis on inclusion and diversity by companies like Disney is making children's entertainment better. They found that 45% of American adults think the push for inclusion is making kids' entertainment worse. I agree with that 100%. I, I don't think that's a bad thing to say. Just look at this terrible, god-awful fucking reboot. Like, I just know, looking at this, and the funny thing is, I think this looks terrible, and every single one of them are white. So it has nothing to do with the race. It has nothing to do with the POC. It's just the same bullshit that is spewed to us 24-7, trying to mask itself as a reboot, but really, it's the same story we've been seeing over and over and over again. The original A League of Their Own is a classic movie. It really is. It's so fucking good. And it's a shame that this is going to ruin its name. And if you guys want to watch the original, I highly suggest that you do because it's definitely worth it. But ultimately, this stuff right here, this is never going to hit home for people if all you focus on is this. If this character entire personality is based in their race, you're going to lose people. You're going to absolutely lose people. And then you can't blame them for tuning out because you constantly use this as an excuse to push racial diversity when the funny thing is you're like, oh, well, people can now see themselves. They couldn't see themselves before, so they didn't watch it before, even though they did. They 100% did, but you try to claim that they didn't. Now you're trying to say, oh, people can see themselves. Well, guess what? Now you you decided to put certain races in here. Now those other people can use the same excuse to say, well, I can't see myself, so why should I watch it? And then you get mad at them for doing that and calling them racist at the end of the day. It's a lose-lose situation, and we caught on to that a long time ago. So most people don't give a shit what you have to say uh, regarding any of that. So ultimately... I am going to say that they are going to continue to fail if they keep focusing on fake diversity. And why don't they just focus on making a damn good story that happens to feature diverse characters? Stop making these diverse characters and their diversity, their entire personality. And then maybe you might just find some little, little tidbit of success that you can work on. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy. And if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.